There's one drone system that's showing up an awful lot on Army trucks, Navy ships, Marine vehicles, and Air Force bases. It has a proven record in combat, and while it can be used against ground targets now, it's really shining in taking down small drones. It's called the Coyote, and it's quickly becoming the United States' favorite drone killer. Everybody is using it, and it is starting to be used for a variety of different missions. Welcome back to Task and Purpose. I'm Kyle and thank you for joining me here today where we are going to talk all about the Coyote, what it does, what it doesn't do, and how it's fitting into seemingly everybody's evolving strategies and tactics in dealing with small drones. But first, let's talk about Odoo because running a business is hard enough. You shouldn't need five different platforms just to keep things moving. Odoo brings it all into one place. Your website, your inventory, your sales tools, all fully integrated and connected. Need a website? Pick a theme, drag and drop what you need, and you're up and running like that. Odoo's built-in AI even helps write your product descriptions and summaries so you don't waste your time sitting there staring at a blank screen. Behind the scenes, inventory is just as simple. You can see what's in stock, what's shipping, and what's delayed all from one dashboard. Automate vendor reminders, pay receipts, and set delivery schedules with just a few clicks. It even syncs automatically with your e-commerce and sales apps. With Odoo, everything works together so you can spend less time managing tools and more time growing your business. Start today at odoo.com. That's O-D-O-O.com. Your first app is free, and we would like to thank Odoo for sponsoring this episode. The Coyote system is a line of expendable drones built by Raytheon, originally based on a design from advanced ceramic research that traces its roots back to 2007. In something of a backwards evolution, where military technology usually bleeds into the civilian sector, the Coyote has a different path. Early in its life, it had more peaceful aspirations and was launched from aircraft as they flew into hurricanes in the name of science. Today, the Coyote family has expanded to three different variants broken down into blocks, all meant for combat. Block 1 is a 24-inch long, pusher-prop driven, pneumatic tube-launched intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance, or ISR-capable drone that also has a small warhead of about 4 pounds, or just under 2 kilograms. But despite the explody stuff, this is an aerial assassin and is not meant for ground targets. The Block 1s rely on Raytheon's KU-band radio frequency radar to find targets, which in this case are Group 1 and 2 drones, and using a radio frequency seeker and proximity fuse speed toward them at about 80 miles per hour or 130 kilometers per hour. Some estimates put the cost at just $15,000 per unit, but these are early estimates and don't include things like the seeker or the warhead. So today they're probably a little bit more expensive, but still pretty damn cheap, all things considered. All right, so real quick, let's do a refresher on how the DoD groups drones. Group one drones are up to 20 pounds, and these are things like the Puma or the Wasp. Group two are up to 55 pounds and get up to the things like the Scan Eagle. Group 3 cover everything between 55 pounds and 1,320 pounds, but they have to fly below 18,000 feet, and these are things like the Shahid drones. Then you've got Group 4 and 5, which are just everything else. Block 2 coyotes look a lot different and are much faster than the others, reaching about 370 miles per hour thanks to their jet engine. These are also radar guided to get the proximity fragmentation warhead on target. Now the warhead is interesting in these because when they do go off, they release a ring of hatred that all but guarantees they'll destroy their target or targets. These are designed for rapid intercepts out to approximately 10 kilometers and are meant for up to group three drones. This is important because it is the group threes like the Shaheds and similar designs that are eating up most of our missiles and other expensive methods of interception. This is why the Navy and the Army are particularly fond of Block 2 variants. They're guided by radar through the Forward Area Air Defense Command and Control, or FAD C Square, or C2. I always say C Square, but people will probably yell at me about it. Like Block 1, these are not intended for hitting ground targets, and they can't return if they don't blow up, but they do have a little bit of flexibility where if they miss their target, they can circle back around. 
These have been used extensively by both the Navy and the Army and have taken down over 170 drones in combat so far. Plus, at an estimated cost of just $100,000 per, these are a relative bargain compared to, say, like the SM-2 missile, which was the most common one fired by the Navy in their Red Sea fight, and those cost about $2.4 million each. Now, we try to avoid math on this show, but our advanced calculations show that you can fire 24 of these before catching up to the cost of an SM-2. And when you're paying taxes to take out drones like the Shahids, which cost an estimated, I don't know, $20,000 a pop, that matters. Finally, we have the Black 3s, which are now known as the Coyote Launched Effect Short Range, or LESR. These are the latest and greatest, though they do take the shape of a Block 1, they come with something of a premium trim package that combines ISR and precision strike capabilities with improved control and modularity. This means it can play both offense and defense on both the ground and in the air, and this really opens up the playbook for any units that have these. It's kind of like if you have a quarterback on your team that's really good at running but can also throw just deep bombs downfield. And it does not need to explode to be useful. In a 2021 test, Raytheon demonstrated a Coyote LESR defeating a drone swarm of 10 drones using non-kinetic means, the details of which haven't been confirmed, but it's probably a microwave weapon type payload. They stated that the test also demonstrated that the non-kinetic version, i.e. the one that doesn't blow up, can be recovered and reused, bringing the cost per intercept way down. Based off the Block 1 Coyotes, and therefore they're a little slower and with limited range, these are likely intended for Group 1 or 2 drones, and not Group 3. Still, these are much lighter, cheaper, and much more suitable for smaller units that may have to dismount to complete their mission. The LESR isn't done evolving yet either. The Navy is looking to take them a step further and awarded $146.7 million to Raytheon in 2023 to build some test examples and perform demonstrations as part of their future advanced strike program. They envision these being launched from unmanned surface and underwater vessels and could be a really important piece in defeating enemy USVs and UUVs along with UAVs. Now, some of you may be wondering if the Block 2 with its almost cruise missile-like performance could be used for ground strike. And I mean, it hasn't been talked about, but after seeing them take the Block 1 and turn it into the Block 3 or the LESR version that's now capable of ground strikes, I don't see why not. They're just not talking about it. On September 28, 2025, the Army awarded Raytheon a substantial $5.04 billion contract for the Coyote system. This includes fixed and mobile launchers, kinetic and non-kinetic interceptors, meaning the LESR, and KU band radar systems. Previously, the Army awarded contracts in the hundred million to a few hundred million dollar range, but this one is obviously significantly more. As we've also stated before, the Army is familiar with the Coyote, but this is a massive purchase and places Coyote firmly in the layered defense strategy that leaders are still developing and dealing with small drones. This big purchase comes as a threat from Shahid-style drones grows. In 2023, it was confirmed that Coyotes were used to shoot down at least two drones targeting U.S. forces in Syria, and the service has confirmed that the Coyote is deployed in the Middle East, Africa, and Europe as well. This entire ecosystem is part of the Army's LIDS architecture. That is short for, and bear with me because this is one of those acronyms where they get a little creative, but it's short for the Low, Slow, Small, Unmanned Aircraft System Integrated Defeat System, LIDS. LIDS combines KURFS radars, FATC Square, electronic warfare tools, and kinetic and non-kinetic interceptors, like the Coyote, into a modular package. Units can deploy it for base defense, convoy overwatch, or just, you know, to defend a forward outpost. In this framework, Coyote serves as the hard kill layer, engaging drones that get past the jammers or spoofers. The Army has fielded multiple iterations of LIDS across CENTCOM and UCOM, which now in 
encompasses AFRICOM, and is continuing funding in the FY26 budgets for expansion. They've also tested the Coyote using the tow launcher on M2 Bradley fighting vehicles, indicating that this is going to go even more mobile. The Army really wants to do a whole lot with Coyote, and they've even discussed adding them to the Precision Strike Missile, or PRISM, which if you remember is fired from the M270 and HIMARS, so they want the PRISM to be able to launch a bunch of Coyotes like it's some high-tech cluster bomb. That would be a pretty incredible capability, and just thinking about it really quick, it seems like it would be perfect for launching out there and then letting the coyotes go do their thing in just overwhelming enemy defenses or infrastructure. And the prism can reach up to 400 kilometers out, which is quite a bit. The Navy has a lot of big plans for the coyote as well. These are currently deployed on Arleigh Burke class destroyers, littoral combat ships, and likely others, and they're becoming a very important piece in the Navy's quest to defend against these small drones. Coyote offers an attractive middle ground for the Navy. It's cheaper per shot than rolling airframe missiles or SM6s, it has a longer reach than the Phalanx close in weapon system, and it can be reloaded from deck mounted containers and integrated with existing shipboard radars and control systems. For distributed maritime operations like the Navy likes to play or for drone swarm defense, it's a pretty useful plug and play player. With the fast variant, the Navy sees value in launching coyotes from both large surface combatants and small expeditionary platforms. In particular, it could support missions that involve countering small drones, fast boats, or mixed swarm threats. And like we mentioned before, these would be perfect on UUVs or even USVs that could theoretically go out in front of a carrier strike group and just make sure everything looks okay. And of course, there's also the Marine Corps who's been using the Coyote as part of their ground-based air defense systems or GBADs since 2018. These are systems like the Mattis or the El Mattis. The Corps is also piggybacking on the Navy's efforts with the Fast Coyote, and while this is just pure speculation from me, I could see them throwing these on the long-range USV that they plan to start back up in fiscal year 2027. And finally, we'll briefly discuss the Air Force, even though they're really not doing anything too novel or unique with them, but they are doing something with them, and if we don't talk about it, all the airmen will come after me in the comments. So, Air Force uses Coyote 2 for counter UAS, there we go, we did it, leave me alone. And of course, there is competition, which is a good thing, and that comes primarily in the form of Andural's Roadrunner M. This one is most similar to the Block 2 Coyote, but it's a reusable interceptor drone with vertical takeoff and landing. It's designed to launch, intercept an aerial threat, and return to base if needed. It also uses AI-guided autonomy to track, maneuver, and engage targets at high speed, making this ideal for situations where GPS is being jammed or other electronic warfare measures are active. The Pentagon recently awarded Andrel a $250 million contract for over 500 Roadrunner M units, along with Pulsar electronic warfare systems. This puts the cost of each at about $500,000, which might sound expensive, but keep in mind that it's still a lot cheaper cheaper than an SM-2 missile, and it's cheaper than losing a handful of troops to a drone, but it is just a little more expensive than a Coyote. Now the edge and the justification for that higher sticker price is reusability and autonomy. It's built for selective engagement, fast decision making when it really matters, and longer term affordability over multiple uses. According to Andrel, the Roadrunner has been operationally deployed for combat evaluation since January 2024, and the Pulsar has been operational since August of 2023. The Pulsar is an interesting system that gives the Roadrunner a portable solution to detect and disrupt through jamming or other electronic means. If the Pulsar works, you don't have to send the Roadrunner up and you can save a few hundred thousand dollars. Part of Coyote's appeal is its platform flexibility. It can be launched from air, sea, land, trailer mounted pods, vehicle integrated platforms, you name it, they can launch it from there. It also integrates well with existing fire control systems across all the services. The cost is also a big factor in the Coyote's popularity. At roughly $100,000 to $200,000 per Block 2 interceptor, it's much cheaper than a Stinger, like that guy up there, that comes at about $400,000, or what they fire out of a Patriot missile system, which is the Pac-3 missile, which can cost up to $6 million. And this system is already combat proven with over 170 kill. 
tools. Coyote also doesn't require a whole lot to be useful. It's a pretty lightweight system overall, meaning it can be transported by relatively light vehicles like the JLTV and the Bradley. And like we mentioned before, it can be launched from practically anything. With all these capabilities that Coyote brings to the table, leaders can now use words like lethality, kill chain, multi-domain warfare, scalable effects, and lots of other really fun buzzwords, and that's what's really important. Let us know what you think in the comments, if the Coyote is a good idea or if we're just spending a bunch of money, $5 billion from the army now, on something that we could probably do cheaper, or if this is really just the only shot we have to actually defend against these small to mid-sized drones. Whatever you got, let us know in the comments. Been really enjoying all the discussions going on down there. It's great when I come back from not being able to read them for a while and find these really long discussions down there. I love it. Thank you for that. I'm Kyle. I wrote the script. Savvy edited the video. That's all I really have for you today. Thank you for your support. Store.taskandpurpose.com. Use code ACTUALLYWATCH for 10% off. Get this shirt and lots more. Anyways, I'm your friendly ginger producer man, Kyle. You are all dismissed and we will see you next time. Thank you so much for being here with us today.